Welcome to Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. I'll be covering every studio song the band has recorded and every bonus track that I can find. Each week we'll go over a new song from the beginning to where they are currently, and as they keep adding albums, I'll keep adding shows. Let the deep dive party begin. In the magic garden, some were singing, some were dancing. All right, well, let's awesome. find out. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to presume, just based on the mixes and, and what people have told me, that in our left ear, that would be Mick playing, and in our right ear, that would be Ken Hensley. Right, I was going to ask that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. I cool. love the contrast of the sounds of the two guitars. I think they work really well together, but I like that they each have a distinct sound to them as well. I love the different styles of playing. But Mick has this thing that he does, and maybe you'll have more insight as a guitar player, uh, it, it's like he rides that line of almost being too much distortion, almost feeding back, but being just under that bar all the time. It's really magic to me how he how he rides that line to control it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's that's the control. I mean, you, you you know, you take that too far, you end up just getting that fuzzy tone that's just you know you can't hear the notes, and you know it's just it just it just takes over. But it, there's definitely control in that playing there, one hundred percent. You know, and I, and I actually didn't pick up who was doing the slide guitar. If it was if it was Mick or it was Ken, but that'd be Ken. Um, that'd be Ken, right? Mm-hmm. That that bit was really cool as well. You know, with Ken, but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I love that trade off. That you know, we talked about Judas Priest there. Actually, very seventies Judas Priest. This is very like seventies Judas Priest as well. You know, the the tones and things like that as well. Um, but yeah, no, that's a, that's a really really cool little trade off, and it's very playful as well. It's very kind of like you know, let's. You know, you can see them almost looking over each other and just with, with smiles, you know, come back to Big Boxy's smile, but you can just right, see them yeah. just like, you know, looking at each other and going, you know, and, and taking a trip, you know, doing the trade-off. But, you know, it's, it's so, yeah, this has got a lot of joy, this song, you know. And uh, you mentioned about the keyboards, actually, and I totally picked up on the Hammond organ. And they, 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 when this, as soon as you played it again, I can hear a Hammond organ in the, yeah, the background I, yeah. in, the, in the chorus. Yeah, yeah. So it's almost like immediately I was, oh, yeah, there's, there's something going on there. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a really interesting uh, sound that Heap has because there weren't a lot of rock bands that were using the Hammond. And the mm-hmm. Hammond really wasn't designed for this kind of music anyway. I mean, it was a designed yeah. to be a blues organ. And what guys like Ken Hensley and John Lord did with it were just, yeah. you know, amazing. Keith Emerson. Um, but uh, it, it just it's a big part of their sound. But I like also when when Ken will come out and, and play a little bit of guitar and do something that kind of just gives mm-hmm. the song a little bit different of a polish. But I love this interplay between him and yeah. Mick. I, it's just fantastic. And those little slide parts. What I like about it is that he didn't just do a slide solo like it's very subtle. It's mm-hmm. just in a couple of spots. Yeah. It's not dominating him to go hey look guys i got a slide on <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? exactly and i think it's just again it's back to that overplaying thing you know you know there's no overplaying here it's very economical it's it's it serves a song um and i think a lot i think certainly you know in the metal world and things like that you know and and you know you'll see a youtube clip of someone shredding and you know and they're doing all this kind of stuff and it, and, and it is impressive it does take ability and, and talent to do that but you know, one thing we were having a moan about in one of our podcasts is that's all great, but it's kind of it, there's there's two things here. Can these guys write songs? If you ask them, go and write me an album of songs, or even just like a three or four songs to contribute to a band, they wouldn't be able to come up with the goods. Um, and these guys are doing it, but they're actually, you know, I, you know, I, I I could I could play fast, I could play you know tastier than this, but at the end of the day, it's about the song. You know, I don't want to, you know, start just just saying, look at me, I can I can I'm gonna play fast because I can and I can't I'm gonna you know play more notes because I can, you know. So and I think that's 
that's um i think certain generations looking back in music like this just think well they're not very good guitarists are they they're just they're just dismissive of this they don't understand that the ability to do these things was there it's just that they are they're deciding to to hold back to actually you know you know the, the old cliches about the notes that you don't play you know well, um, it's, it's almost like looking up somebody in the guinness book of world's records who's like the uh the the hot dog eating champion right he's he's eaten more <laughs> hot dogs in a minute or two minutes than anyone else in the world and i look at a guy like that and i'm not picking on people that eat hot dogs but i'm, I'm looking at that and saying <laughs> okay but but that's impressive that you can do that it has no real value in life other than to be in this book so yeah. can you also plan out a balanced meal? Like, do you have that ability? Yeah. I, there's, <laughs> like, like guitar players tend to lose me when they get too flashy. And one yes. thing that I do love about Mick's playing, and I've said this on the show many times, is whether he's playing fast or not, he stays within the construct of the song. He knows how to play yeah. for the song and not just be like, hey, look at this lick I figured out I can play. Yeah, whatever yeah. you guys are doing in the background is great. I know you're going to keep playing, so I'm just going to do my thing. It's never that way. You know, he plays yeah. within the taste of the song. And I love that. I think Salisbury is a perfect example of being able to play mm -hmm. fast and being able to do a lot of crazy stuff, but not losing yourself in yourself and forgetting the song you're playing. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, this comes out of dynamics as well, because when you hold back, um, whether it's on a particular song or a particular album, and then you get that point where, where it does go fast or does go... It's, it has all the more impact when it happens. Well, and all right, here's another song where we've got 40,000 notes in the solo and, you know, you're just expecting that for every song. But if, if when when those moments happen, whether it's, you know, um, the big heavy riff that comes in, whether it's, the, you know, the you know the, the absolutely amazing drum fills, you know, whatever, you know, you know, dynamically in a song or an album, when these things happen and they've been held back, when they actually appear, it just, the impact is increased tenfold. And, you know, don't, don't give everything away too soon sometimes it's a little bit some, I mean this is a straight rocker you know I get that let's just go for it let's just rock out and I, and I get that and you need that but um, but yeah yeah you, you know and I think these guys are just saying you know just this is all this needs mm -hmm. you yeah, know just they're... just a couple of you know subtle subtle trade-off and and you know it's it's very clever and it's it's like I say they just sound like they're having fun and not you know? not just to pick on guitarists for doing that because drummers can do that as well I remember um watching some of Terry Bazio's drumming videos and He's an amazing drummer, played for Missing Persons. He played for Frank yeah. Zappa. So you know if he played for absolutely. Frank Zappa, he's a top-tier player. Like, absolutely. But I'm, I'm watching these drum videos and these amazing things he's coming up with, and I'm thinking, that's really impressive that you can do that, but what can you do with that? Like, what, what, what is the musical validity of it? It's, yeah, it's, it's great for yeah, showing yeah. off and doing it in a drum solo, but could you put it in a song? What could you work around this? Yeah. And, and I just can't find stuff personally and i think i'm a pretty creative guy but mm -hmm. i a lot of times i can't find a validity for stuff like that in the bigger music world indeed uh, i mean that's that's the thing how, how are you going to apply this you know it's um um i mean i think neil peart was a perfect example of a guy that could do you know he does his, he does his big you know solo on stage and and it's fantastic because it's very musical um but when he plays the songs and it, you know he's, he's he's grooving along with the songs. He's not overcomplicating it. You know he'll do very clever things, but they're subtle. And you know he all, again we always talk about serving the song. I certainly I am anyway. And he always did that. But he can do he could do all the fancy stuff. You know when he plays it solo, it's like yeah okay I'm going to show off a little bit. But it was always musical. So I think there's there's this almost like a fine line at times. You know you can be a virtuoso musician, but you can have heart. You can serve the song. You, you know it's possible to do this. You know and there's some musicians that you know are obviously fantastic at what they do but it's like you say how do you apply that you know and you know and and, and a song or a, you know and a band you know and the cool thing about a solo section like this too is that on stage i mean you could drag this out into you know three or four uh, minutes yes, of just absolutely. you know a guitar battle yeah. and you yeah. know that kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a it's good like play, play, playing a bit and then get the crowd to sing back and stuff, playing another lick and you know right. yeah you could you could have a lot of fun with that but absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. for sure. And then, and then have John Lawton uh, add in some of his mmms and and that that he yeah. does. He's a big fan of uh, of putting in those little uh, subtleties in the in the vocals, where whether there's vocals or not, you know. <laughs> Brilliant. All 
oh, I know what they're doing. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. Uh, they're just changing from 4-4 four, four to 3-4. One and so a two and a three. Right? And a, ah, yeah. okay, right. Ah, okay, right. And I'm a bit, I just grooving along. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even pick up that. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I could shut off my brain and not think as much as I do. And then other yeah, times I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm glad it's I like, thought of that. You know? Yeah, it's, I think the more I get used to a song, the more I start doing exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just kind of like, yeah, yeah, just, just start home in. But I'm just... I've got a beer here, so I'm just grooving along. I'm like, you know, <laughs> probably, go. probably not going to be very much used to you from now on. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's fine with me. Yeah, I get what you're talking about, about the that's, ending coming that up. Yeah, scream, uh, you know, it's up to that really high scream. That is, again, that's, again, shown his versatility as a vocalist because you think he might just be that, you know, obviously Coverdale-esque, you know, we talked about Coverdale, you know, just kind of singing and grooving along, but to be up to that that high note just shows, again, this guy's ability mm. as a vocalist, you know, that that's a fantastic end. But I'm going to say, I, I, I said it earlier, I suspected that they recorded this together, but based on the last 30 seconds of that song, I'm going to say they had to have. There, there's no yeah. way that they could have done that as clean as they did without looking at each other and, you know, being in that in sync, you know. Absolutely. It's, it's got, you know, the way that whole ends, I mean, what the drums are doing there at the, at the end and, you know, the way they all just, it, it's not just like the, the, the you know, the, on the cymbals, you know, just mm -hmm. shh, you know, right. the guitar's yeah. going like that and go, eh, which they could have done. <laughs> sure. It's just a typical ending. There, there's, there's things going on there. You know, the vocals go there, we think, and then they go way up that high bit and the drums are, you know, there's a lot of really cool fills going on there mm -hmm. and that's a really, really smart ending to that song, you know. Yeah, and it's they, powerful. Went, they could have went really basic. They could have went really basic and, and mm -hmm. obvious, but you know, there's there's really cool things going on in that. Even that just that end part. There, there's yeah. there's very rarely a time I would ever say that much of what Uriah Heep did was basic. I mean, in, yeah, in, yeah. <laughs> in this particular era, it's interesting because there is a lot of repetition of choruses, and mm. and sometimes they've added little dynamics, and sometimes they just repeat what they did before. So it's kind of an interesting time because they're not pushing the bounds of what they could do as much as they had in the past. And that's fine. We also have to look at this as a different time in music. This isn't the early yes. 70s. Now we're talking about, I think, 78 when this came out. So now we're talking about they're competing with disco, they're competing with punk. Uh, the, yeah. the British New Wave invasion is not too far away. Mm -hmm. So it's a different time than, let's say, 71, where you yes. could just do whatever you wanted and people were going to listen yeah. to it, you know, either that's accept that. it or not. So we're really starting to get into a time where songs became more structured, where choruses did become a little bit repetitive. It's not Uriah Heep. That was just kind of the style of the day. And that really would go on through, well, till now. <laughs> People are yeah, still doing well, that. that. Yeah. <laughs> but that was, a, that was a huge thing in the 80s because of the synth programming and all that. Well, we'll just, we'll just repeat that section on the synth and then we'll just sing it that way again. And, you know, not a lot of inflection and changes. Uh, yes. but, but it's a solid song. It's a great rock and roll tune, very yeah. powerful. And, uh, I dig it. Yeah. I, I really, really dig it. Um, it's, uh, again, it's just one of these ones. It's just like, uh, I very rarely make playlists. I'm more of a, just an albums guy. I put on an album and I'll listen to an album of it, but, um, I have started to do it more recently. Just, just you know, maybe I should do this more. And just, you know, I made mixtapes when I was a kid, and you know, and you know, it's kind of, you know, I feel like a wee bit like that again, you know. Um, and I think this would be one that it's when you talked about your top ten, you know, song, songs to make you feel good, top ten songs to make you, you know, cry or whatever, you know, whatever, <laughs> right, yeah. whatever, whatever vibe you want to go for, whatever, you know. And this would be just like a driving to work, you know. I just I'm going to start the day in the right way. I'm just gonna you know, blast this out as I'm driving along, you know, and, and I think, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, 
yeah, really, really, really happy to have this song in my life now. So, and, oh uh, yeah, this is a great driving <laughs> song for sure. This yeah. is this is one to put on the in the car and just hit the highway Absolutely. and yeah, make Absolutely. it happen. Uh, keep your eye out for police though, because you're you know you're that's likely true. to be a little heavy footed yeah. on the pedal. I yeah, actually did. Uh, I did get a <laughs> ticket one time uh, because of a song I was listening to in the hall, of the Mountain King by Edward Grieg on my way back to work uh, from my lunch hour. And that that song happened to be next on my tape or iPod or whatever mm -hmm. I had at the time. And as that song, because it starts out pretty slow, and as that song gets faster, my foot was getting heavier on the gas pedal, and I didn't realize it. And the next thing you know, I'm doing like 48 in a 35 mile an hour zone. And uh, <laughs> the cop didn't really care that I was listening to the song, and the song made me do it. Ah, uh, funnel that off here. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that's not a legal defense. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a little bit of an advantage over you, Scots, because I think um, you guys are 55, aren't you? So we can go 70 here. So, you know, I can, oh, yeah. I can, do, a wheel, I can do an extra 15 miles an hour and still be yep. within the law. So, <laughs> well, they, they've, uh, they've relaxed some. It depends on where you are, but some, oh, of, the, really? some of the right. highways, I think, are, I want to say, I want to say 85, but I, and I'm sober right, right now that nope. that sounds like something I would think if I were drunk. Um, <laughs> I know 75 for sure in, in like the open country highways. Oh, that's uh, cool. And, and I wasn't aware of that. Most of the inner cities are like 55 or 65 now. Right. You know, right. or they're 55 and you go 70 anyway, because everyone else is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You always add the next for 50 miles. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, man, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. I've had such a good time having you on as a guest. This is, you know, we've exchanged uh, emails before, but this is the first time that we've ever yeah. actually spoken together. And uh, I've really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah. Uh, likewise, Scott, uh, this has been, this has been fantastic. I've really had a lot of fun. And uh, if anything, all it's did is just increase my, uh, you know, my, growing love for the band you know because i think um you know i just i i need to go back and then now probably tomorrow i'm gonna right, i need to go and check these albums out now so i've got this now this newfound um energy for the band again just even talking about them you know over right. a beer and you know and i know i know it's like 12 12 noon or almost like where you are or we started at 12 noon and yeah. it's uh i think it's about 10 o'clock almost like, you know, yeah. <laughs> so, so so um yeah yeah so it's, it's beer time for me not so much for you scott but oh it's, <laughs> it's fine like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't sleep anyway. So, you know, it's just, it, it's a waste of time. I could be doing a podcast. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> I love that. That's brilliant. But, but come back That's brilliant. and see us again. Man. I'd love to have you back on yeah. the show to, to review another song yeah. at some point. Well, no, that would be fantastic because, like I say, my, my heat journey is still very much ongoing and uh, I would love to come back and, and, you know, I certainly, if there's anything interesting I find, you know, going forward and you've not already talked about it, I'll maybe drop you a line and say, yeah, can I? Can I talk about this song? Yeah, you know, so, so, yeah. You know, well, we do that. I've got um, uh, I've got everything scheduled now. Whether that schedule will change or not, I don't know. But I mean, because a lot can happen in a year. But I've got basically uh, just under a year to catch up to where the band is currently at now with all the albums that they've already yeah. released. Let alone the one they're working on, and mm -hmm. you know, God knows how many more albums they'll put out by the time I get to that. So uh, yeah, yeah, any anything that comes up, just uh, shoot me a note, let me know, and I'll reserve that episode Fantastic. for you for sure. And if not, just I'm... pick a random song. Just go, you know what, uh, that one, and we'll and yeah, we'll do another cool. show. I like it. I like it. <laughs> and Scott, likewise, we need to we need to get you over on to the to the lap pods uh, oh, podcast. I love that. Um, we we need to we need to talk because we we're at the point where we are we're kind of just probably we're doing some of the solo stuff, but we're just talking a bit more generally about Queen. Um, we had Rye coming on that, you know, we've started this other podcast within the Lap Pods podcast, which is just basically called Not in the Lap of the Pods, which is <laughs> very unimaginably, unimaginably titled, title, sorry. And um, yeah, so we've talked about a Sabbath album, so Rye came on and talked about that with us. So yeah, I mean, we, we need to get you on there, Scott, because, uh, you, you know, you're a great podcaster and, uh, you know, the quality of you know, your delivery and your editing, you know, that is absolutely fantastic. It's, it's certainly a, a sort of standard, we, you know, we aspire to as well, you know, because there's so so many good, good podcasts on this network and we're just trying to get get as close to you guys as we can. So, yeah. Uh, well, you guys are doing a great <laughs> job. I love your show. Uh, like I said, I've still got a few episodes to catch up on. Looking forward to hearing the one you did with Rye. Uh, he's scheduled to come on the show in another month or two, I think, for the song that he picked. Uh, but I'm fantastic. looking forward to having him on. Uh, it's it's just great. I think the the shows that we have in our network are are just every one of them is a fantastic show. I haven't really checked out yeah. the the two new ones that we've just added very much yet, 
but yeah. uh, like all the ones that we've had that I would call, call us the classic lineup of the <laughs> of the network. I would uh, say so. Yeah. <laughs> when I first started listening to your show, I was just blown away by how how well you guys sound together, how how much your passion for Queen comes out. And that's something that's harder to do by myself because I, I, you know, I can say I really like this. I really like that. But when you've got two people like that passion just kind of grows together and you feel it because you're sharing it and interacting with somebody. So it's, it's a whole different dynamic what you guys have. But I think it really works. And I, I really love your show. I really appreciate hearing that. And I think it's it's a, I think it's yeah, it's a bit of a trade off, I suppose, in some ways, because in Probably all of us separately at times probably just want to just be on our own and just say our, our, what we need to say at times, you know, just say, right. you know, well, I just get my point across here. Right. So everyone shut up. <laughs> I'm going to just say this, you know. <laughs> so I think there's benefit to, you know, being on your own, definitely. Um, but yeah, being, being together with the guys is, is cool as well, you know. So it's, yeah. But no, I do appreciate that, Scott. That's really cool of you to say that. Excellent. Well, thank you for coming on today. I look forward to your next visit. And in the meantime, good luck with uh, with your show. Just keep it moving forward. You guys are doing great. You too, Scott, man. Pleasure. Absolutely enjoy myself. Thank you very much. Take care, David. You too, man. Bye-bye. Catch you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, please consider going over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast outlet, leaving a rating or a review. Be sure to subscribe to make sure that you are notified when new episodes are available. Please be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Uriah Heap enthusiasts and anyone who you think would like Uriah Heap, which should be everyone. And if you are so inclined, please feel free to contribute to the Patreon account. And if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you can also pay through the PayPal link on the website listed in the show links below. I would also like to thank Uriah Heap for their very generous support of the show. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Happy days.